What's up, everybody? This is your boy Tech G back with another video to help you successfully pass the CompTIA A plus 221002 examination. So let's get into it. In this video, you're going to learn about incident response, licensing, DRM, EULAs, and regulated data. All right, first thing we need to address is this thing called prohibited content. So as it directly relates to incident response, prohibited content and activity can be defined as follows. It could be any content stored on a company owned or company managed computer, mobile device, or network that is contrary to organizational policy. And it can also be any activity performed or received by a company owned or company managed computer, mobile device, or networks that is contrary to organizational policy policy. Incident response. So an incident is an event that could lead to loss of or disruption to an organization's operations, services, or functions. Incident response is a term describing the activities of an organization to identify, analyze, and correct hazards to prevent future reoccurrences. So the first step of the incident response process is to identify exactly what happened to determine if the incident needs to be troubleshooted at your level or escalated to a higher level to handle the incident. The next step is to report the incident through the proper channels, followed by taking steps to ensure that the data and or device is preserved. Preserving the data or device could mean actions like making backups of the computer's image or simply leaving the device as is and waiting for a computer forensics expert to examine the machine and collect evidence documentation so thorough documentation is your friend it is important that you record any and all details related to the incident even if you have to write the information down on paper or snap pictures documentation should include any processes procedures and user training that might be necessary to avoid a similar incident in the future chain of custody so in legal context this is the chronological documentation or paper trail that records the sequence of custody control transfer analysis and disposition of materials including physical or electronic evidence the chain of custody should be initiated at the start of any investigation and should include the tracking of evidence and documentation processes who has custody of the evidence at any given time and the verification that the evidence has not been modified or tampered with. All right, let's talk about licensing. So a software license, this is a legal instrument usually by way of contract law with or without printed materials governing the use or redistribution of software. In software licenses that you need to become familiar with to pass this test, you need to know what DRM is, a EULA, open source versus commercial licenses, personal licenses, and enterprise licenses. Let's talk about DRM. So DRM or digital rights management. This is an access control technology for restricting the use of proprietary hardware and copyrighted works. DRM technologies try to control the use, modification and distribution of copyrighted works such as software and multimedia content, as well as systems within devices that enforce these policies. So in layman's terms, DRM limits the end user's rights to copy, transfer or use software or digital media. An example of DRM is the limits on the number of systems that can use an application at the same time, such as Adobe Creative Cloud or Microsoft Office 365. Next, we have a EULA. So this stands for an end user license agreement. And this is a legal contract entered in between a software developer or vendor and the user of the software, often where the software has been purchased by the user from an intermediary, such as a retailer. A EULA specifies in detail the rights and restrictions which apply to the use of the software. Next, we have open source and commercial licenses. So open source software, this is a type of computer software in which source code is released under a license in which the copyright holder grants the right to use, study, change, and distribute the software to anyone and for any purpose to include being sold. However, open source licenses require that sellers of open source software not limit the rights of purchasers to use, change, or share the software. The Linux operating system, this is 
is an example of open source software that is available in a variety of system distributions, which are known as distros. Then we have commercial software, and this is computer software that is produced for sale or that serves commercial purposes. Most commercial software other than open software is referred to as closed software. Microsoft Windows, Mac OS, and Adobe Creative Cloud are examples of commercial software. Unlike open source licenses, commercial licenses do not cover the source code, which are the instructions used to make the software, and they limit how licenses can use the object code or the program. Let's talk about a personal license. So a personal license is an option for private individuals who purchase a software license with their own funds solely for their own use. Personal licenses are not to be purchased, refunded, or in any way financed by companies. Essentially, these licenses limit the use of the software to one or a very small number of computers within the same household. An enterprise license usually permits unlimited use of a product or system throughout an enterprise, although some limit limitations and restrictions may apply an enterprise license eliminates the need to register a software program every time it is installed on a new device or used by a new person within the organization. Enterprise licenses, they differ from personal licenses by they include management and security features that are designed for the enterprise. They have different rules for software upgrades and personal license software. They may be licensed per seat, per device, per processor, or in other ways. And some personal software licenses licenses such as Microsoft Home Office and Student, they are specifically restricted from being used within businesses. Let's talk about regulated data. So regulated data, this is data that requires specific privacy and security safeguards as mandated by federal, state, local law, and or organizational policies or agreements. Four types of data are regulated and they must be protected by the network administrators and they are as follows. You have PII or personally identifiable information and this is information relating to the identifiable person such as their name, address, driver's license, social security number, etc. Next, you have PCI, and this stands for Payment Card Industry. And this is a standard in which information security standards for organizations that handle branded credit cards from major credit card schemes, they are to protect credit card holders' data, such as their card numbers, their addresses, and their credit information. Then we have GDPR. This stands for General Data Protection Regulation. And this is a regulation in the European Union where they have data protections and privacies to include protecting data such as health, biometrics, genetic information, and your criminal history. And then we have PHI. This stands for Protected Health Information. So under the U.S. law, this is any information about health status, provision of health care, or payment of health care that is created or collected by by a covered entity and can be linked to a specific individual. Also, just understand that any organizations that hold or use any of this type of information, they do have the responsibility for protecting this information from identity thieves. All right. So in summary, we've talked about incident response, licensing, DRM, EULAs, and regulated data. Now, if you felt like you've gotten anything valuable out of this information, go ahead and hit the like button, share button, drop a comment, but most importantly, subscribe to this channel. Also go check out my website, Technology G, so that you can get read up on the latest and greatest to help you successfully pass the CompTIA A plus 221,002 examination. And until next video, ladies and gentlemen, peace.